The NBA draft is a really interesting basketball phenomenon. You can have a player who gets drafted in the second round that goes on to make multiple all-star teams or win a defensive player of the year or even win multiple MVPs. Now on the flip side of this, you can also have guys that get drafted in the first round that go on to receive one of the worst labels that a young player can get within their first few years of being drafted, and that's being labeled a bust. There's so many players throughout NBA history that have been deemed busts by the NBA community. Some possibly deserve that label, and some maybe not so much. Perhaps one of the most bizarre series of events leading to a player being labeled a bust is the case of Markel Fultz. Now, I'm not going to dive too much into his time in Philadelphia and all of the mystery that surrounded that because there's a ton of videos that do a great job of investigating what really happened and what the truth is behind why a player who was such an impressive prospect coming out of college seemingly forgot how to shoot a basketball. But rather, in this video, I want to look at where Markel Fultz is at now and how he's probably a lot further from being a bust than you might think and how the Orlando Magic can save his career. Now, after being traded to the Orlando Magic, Markel continued to show signs of high potential, but after his first full season in Orlando, he would suffer a torn ACL and he was going to be sidelined for over a year. The former number one overall pick in the 2016 NBA draft, depending on who you asked, had been labeled a bust since his days in Philadelphia. But since his return late this past season, he's been able to show flashes of why he was selected with the first overall pick. And the truth is that the upside that we saw from Markel Fultz when he was in college is definitely still there. And the Orlando Magic are actually doing a really good job of tapping into that potential and putting him in a position to succeed. One of the primary advantages that Markel Fultz has in Orlando compared to when he was in Philadelphia is that there's little to no pressure for him. Philadelphia was in a position where they were kind of ready to start to compete and they were trying to build around Joel Embiid and get them to a point where they were contending again. In Orlando, they're still in that rebuilding phase. On the scoring side of things, he averaged a really solid 19.6 points per 75 possessions in 18 games this season. I know it's somewhat of a small sample size to draw from just in terms of the games that he played, but he did this with the best efficiency of his career so far. Now, one of the biggest draws with Markel Fultz was the promise of a mid-range game, and I personally think that that potential is still there. The tools by which he goes about getting his shots is largely unchanged from the bag of tricks that he showcased in college. He has arguably one of the cleanest hesitation crossovers in the entire league, even if we haven't been fortunate enough to see it a ton over the last year or so. He makes really good use of this hesitation move to catch guys sleeping when he gets going downhill. You can see here when he does it, the defender's hips are going to shift to be parallel to the sideline, and this downward momentum really carries his defender deeper into the paint, and it's going to create enough space for Fultz to go ahead and get into his shot. Now with his frame and wingspan, it allows him to rise up over the contest to get the bucket. Again, we're going to see him make use of that hesitation ability. He starts with a hesitation, feigning the crossover, and instead getting into this in and out dribble move with his right hand. His defender second guesses the direction for just a split second, and he's forced to backpedal and prevent the right side drive. And as soon as Markel Fultz recognizes this, he's going to capitalize on it immediately to get off the shot. Fultz really plays a lot bigger than he actually is. His height is super deceiving because you wouldn't be able to tell that he's six foot three just by looking at him. And maybe it's just me, but when I watch him play, it looks so much more like a guy who's six five or six six. A big factor with this is his six foot nine wingspan, and it makes him a much more capable scorer who otherwise might be hindered by the overall height disadvantage at six foot three. These more minute details of his offensive game are going to need some time to really come through on a night to night basis, but right now it's there and it's usable. He just maybe needs to grow into it a little bit. But he did shoot 41.4% on mid range shots this year, which is only slightly below league average. With any player, I'm much more concerned about how a guy is getting their shots more than just the efficiency that he's hitting them at. Not all shots are created equal, so with Markel, I think it's really important to acknowledge the shot creation ability while maintaining optimism that the efficiency is going to come along down the road. But the framework for a really solid scoring game is very much there. 
He plays with a fluidity that's hard to come by from young prospects. I look at this play as an example of that. This initial spin move is clearly something that's been practiced, yet it doesn't feel predictable or robotic or mechanical. It gets Okoro moving backwards and it allows Markel to get into space for an open jumper. That's some really special talent. It's an improvisational style, yet it doesn't feel out of control. You're welcome to have concerns about the efficiency coming along, but the creation ability is enough for me to table that worry for the foreseeable future. Now, the mid-range creation is exciting on its own, but this craftiness possibly shines most bright in the finishing department. Markel really is an excellent finisher, or at least he certainly looked like it during the small stretch of the season that we got to see him. We can see from this graph that although Markel's actual shot quality at the rim is pretty bad in the bottom 25% of the league, he's making his shots at the rim with the best of the best guard finishers in the NBA. So even though these shots are quote unquote bad shots, he's making them at a really, really high rate. Fultz shot a whopping 72.4% in the restricted area this season. He's a tough shot maker at the basket, and it seems like he's going to have no issue handling contact when going downhill. His situational awareness too is an interesting thing to note. Here he once again gets going into that hesitation to slow down the defense, but Franz Wagner is guiding his man towards Markel's defender. Now recognizing that he can use this awkward situation as a makeshift screen, he goes to his left hand with a crossover, forcing Turner into his teammate, and it opens up a clear lane to the basket. He really likes to get guys flat-footed. Here he stalls, which gets PJ Washington flat on his feet. Fultz's hesitation here serves two purposes. Not only does it put PJ Washington in a difficult defensive position to have to recover on the drive, but it lets Markel load up power in his left foot so that when he comes down, he's able to use that momentum as a springboard to attack Washington while he's at his lowest. It also forces him to have to make a really difficult 180 degree rotation with his hips, which puts Markel in front of him and allows him to get to the basket. There are some concerns about his lack of a three-point shot. I'm yet to rule out the idea that his perimeter shooting won't develop over time, but I also don't think that the lack of a three-point shot is a detriment to him having success in the NBA as a scorer. His scoring right now is really multifaceted and not just dependent on one type of shot. He offers some level of spacing due to that mid-range game that really seems to be coming along nicely and his rim gravity should allow his playmaking to really show through. And I think that's a good segue into his playmaking. Real quick guys, I wanna take a second to shout out the sponsor of today's video and that's Basketball Index. Basketball Index is one of my favorite tools for finding interesting statistics on players. They've got a ton of tools that you can use. And one of my favorites is the headshot plots that you can make through their website. Say that you wanna know who the best rebounders in the NBA are. All you have to do is go into the headshot tool at bballindex.com and put in your search criteria, hit plot graph, and then boom, you've got a unique chart showing you the league's best rebounders. You can get 20% off your first month subscription by using code alexhoops20 when you sign up for a limited time. If you've ever been curious about where I get some of my stats, you can use Basketball Index and get access to them all right now. All you have to do is click the link in the description to sign up today. Once again, thank you so much to Basketball Index for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. Some quick numbers here. He averaged five and a half assists per game over his 18 game stretch, which is really solid considering he only played around 20 minutes a night. To be completely honest, the interesting thing that I noticed about a pretty big chunk of his assists is that they aren't really anything exactly jaw-dropping or highlight worthy. In most cases, he's making this safe, reliable pass that allows his teammates to capitalize on the defensive situation that's being presented. He's doing a great job of utilizing that rim pressure that I mentioned earlier, already showing signs that he's capable of leveraging it to his advantage and creating open looks for his teammates. Here, Holiday leaves his man so that Phoenix can double team Markel. You can see that JaVale and Cameron Payne are both turning to pay attention to Markel, which allows Harris to flash to the paint, and Fultz is gonna be able to dump it off to him for a slam due to the fact that all of the defense was focused on him and not Gary Harris making the cut. Him and Wendell are gonna initiate this really high pick and roll and recognizing that Aiton is backpedaling and won't be able to rotate quick enough to catch up to Wendell, he just makes a really nice shovel pass to him for Wendell to get the open lane to the basket. You see, this is really simple stuff, but it's split second decision making and understanding of how the defenses are playing that allows Markel to capitalize on these quote unquote easy assists. 
they're easy because he creates situations that allow for easy connections. His playmaking is going to be that icing on the cake that solidifies that high upside that Fultz was labeled with coming out of college. The scoring is going to come along just fine, I'm not really worried about that, but it's the playmaking that really takes him to the next level. So what should we expect from Markel Fultz next year? What are some reasonable expectations? To answer this question, we can take a look at some trends. Looking at his points and high value assists per 75 possessions, and of course ignoring 2021 for the most part because he hardly played due to his injury, he's potentially capable of getting up towards that 20 points and 10 assists range. Now, these are just projections, so it shouldn't be taken at face value that he's guaranteed to get all of these numbers, but assuming that he gets the on-ball reps that he needs, I don't think it's unreasonable that he can't be a reliable 17 to 18 point per game score with seven or eight assists per night and continue to get better as his career progresses. We really have seen, for the most part, all that we need to see to buy into the potential that, quite frankly, always was there. So much of a player's success is dictated by the situation that they're drafted into. I kind of touched on it earlier, but even the highest touted prospects, if drafted to a bad situation, can fall into the hole of being labeled a bust if they're not given the opportunity to thrive. I'm not ready to give up on Markel Fultz, and you shouldn't be either. Let me know what you're expecting to see from Markel Fultz next season in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video and you're new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button and leaving a like. That's the number one way to support me and help me continue making content. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.